you wait until my great symphony is finished. You mean me? No, no. I mean the loud one with the high hat who's making a noise like a bull. <laughs> <laughs> me? Yes! And uh, what is the lovely singer? Desire from her obedient servant. Ah. That her obedient servant stops making such a hideous row. <laughs> my dear lady, I apologize for my bibulous belly. Play on, Maestro. Play on. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Max Wilson. Welcome to this edition of 20 Dunstan Terrace. I'm at the home of Fred Koo in the St. Helena, Napa Valley of Northern California. Today on 20 Dunstan Terrace, I have a very special show for you. Recently, I had the pleasure of interviewing Phil Lumsden and Julie Harrod. Phil Lumsden wrote the play, Poet Under Saturn, An Evening with Paul Verlaine. And Julie was the director. Let's go to that interview now. Hello, I'm Max Wilson. Today I'm visiting with Phil Lumsden and Julie Harrod in San Francisco. Phil is an actor and playwright, and Julie is a director and an actress. They recently collaborated together in those roles in a one-man show, Under Saturn, An Evening with Paul Verlaine, at the Exit Theater in San Francisco. Phil and Julie, I want to thank you for letting me in to talk to you today. Phil, you wrote Poet Under Saturn. How did that show evolve? Well, we originally wrote it in 1981 as part of my senior thesis to graduate college. I was a poetry theater major. And about, oh, I don't know, about a year ago, I was feeling creative again. I hadn't done anything with the play in 10 years. And I know Christina, our, our Augello, is that how you pronounce it? Augello, who runs the Exit Theater. And I mentioned that I had a one-man show ran about a half an hour. She said, send it to me. So I sent it to her and promptly forgot that I had even sent it. About five or six months went by, I get a call from Christina, want to do your show. You need to double it in length, and you need to star it. Oh. I was like, OK. So after 10 years, I, I wrote another 10 pages, is basically what it came down to. It's a lot harder than I thought it was. When I first wrote it, it just poured out of me. And the second, after 10 years, it was tough going. How did you go about the research on Verlaine's life then? Okay, well, this is, it was same, interesting because I did the exact same research all over again 10 years later. Uh, read probably three or four different Verlaine biographies, read Rambeau biographies, the historical pieces of the whole latter 19th century Paris, uh, lots of different, uh, lots of different poetry of the era, and translating it, boning up on my French, buying a new Cells dictionary, and relearning it all. And uh, oh God, I had books all over this house for for a month. 
and I reread every single one of them, basically, just to get it back in my head and get the feel for the for the time. I think. Julie, when did you come into the project as the director? Um, quite rapidly. Um, there was some time where there were questions about who would direct um, from Christina as well as within our own minds, within Phil's mind, I think. But he very quickly uh, said, no, I, I think it's you, dear. And I said, well, what about so-and-so, and what about so-and-so? And he's like, no, I, I think you're it. I think you understand the, the play and uh, the character. And I know that you know how to make it come to life. So he was, he was real sure about it sooner than he was, frankly. But uh, he convinced me of it, so I said, OK. As the director, what are the problems and strengths of working with the actor slash writer? The actor writer yeah. specifically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, when anything went wrong, I was like, I don't know, ask the writer. I, <laughs> I didn't write it. Um, actually, we had very few problems working together, and and that um, it actually helped me a lot to know that he had written it as well because I felt very confident in what he was doing creatively because he had a thorough understanding of the fabric of the thing and in fact when he was rewriting some of it some of the material we actually worked together a little bit on that so my involvement was with the material on the paper even before we got to rehearsal um, rehearsal stages so uh, it worked out really well um, there had been some um, questions as to whether we'd be able to function together in a relationship as, as people as well as uh, the actor-director uh, relationship, which proved to be no problem at all. We did fine. We did great, yeah. Are there any, just, are there any actor-director couples in Hollywood history or in theater history where either couple, one of them has directed, one of them has acted? I mean, I know there have been a lot of them. Newman and Woodward. Yes. Newman and That's Woodward, right. yeah. There's one. Yeah. Um, one just like a candy. I don't know if they direct. I don't know if Hume Conan's ever directed her or vice versa. So. So. Maybe, uh, I don't know. This That's a good question. I'm sure back further, further. Mary Pickford uh, direct Douglas yeah. Fairbanks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> she did direct, I know that. Yeah. Do you feel that you've completed Poet Under Saturn, or is that something that you might Enlarge. Well, it was interesting because when I finally started rehearsing, after I rewrote the play, it took the longest time just to get the lines down in my head again. It runs, the play runs 26 pages or so, uh, and it took about three weeks to memorize it. And by that point, I didn't have much time before we put the show on. So I had about uh, maybe two weeks, maybe a week and a half of actual working with the role. And I thought I got it to a pretty good spot. And the other night I was watching the video, and I had never seen myself do the role before, you know? I mean, I'd been doing it and doing it, but I'd never seen it. And watching it the other night, I was like, no, 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 I can take this much further than I've already got it at. I mean, I feel good about where it's at now, but I think it has got room to do could you see it as a musical? <laughs> yes, actually, I could. Yes, yeah. with, with, the, with the camels, with the can, can, can yes. Yeah. It's hard because it's a one one person show at this point, you right? Know? So I'd have to do it all. Yeah. Julie, you've been acting since you were a young girl. Can you tell us something about that? Sure. Um, I began professionally. Well, I I grew up essentially in an off off Broadway theater in New York City, Greenwich Village called the 13th Street Theater, um, and was in several productions there. My father was producer, director, manager of the theater, and was in a few productions there. And my brother was as well. And then he started, my brother got an agent and started doing, doing uh, larger work and got a Broadway show and some TV work. And he's about six years older than I. And at this time, I was about eight or so. And, started to get a little jealous of my brother and uh, went to my parents and said, you know, 
couldn't I get an agent too? And couldn't I get into this too? Because he was going off to Broadway every night. He was doing a great day in the morning with Colleen Dewhurst and um, J.D. Cannon. And uh, so there was some jealousy going on in there. And I said, you know, I want to get in on this. So they were very, um, they were both actors, directors. My father graduated from Yale Drama School. My mother was an excellent actress with no formal training, um, but they had met uh, at Yale. She was local and was doing local theater there. And he saw her and then they did a production together. Oh. And um, that's how they met. And But they were not your basic average stage parents at all. In fact, they, they downplayed it so much. Uh, they, the last thing they wanted to do was to force their kids into you know, what, what they were doing. And so they were somewhat taken aback when I was aggressive about this, but they said, well, sure, let's, let's see, and uh, sent some pictures to my brother's agent, and uh, she called me in, I had an interview with her, and then was sent off on my first audition and got the job. Which, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's like winning the lottery. Yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing, and I don't think anybody really expected it. Um, and that was a segment for the nurses on, on the old series on television. And I uh, got the lead role, uh, guest starring role, um, or the lead role, anyway, in one segment with uh, Richard Kiley. And I played, it was really interesting, I played a mentally retarded girl who couldn't speak a word. So all of everything, all her action, everything she did was facial and, and lots of, you know, stuttering and stuttering and, uh, but no actual language available to the character at all. Well, Jane Wyman once won an Oscar for keeping her big mouth shut. She said it was the smartest <laughs> thing she ever did. <laughs> and Belinda, so it yeah. just, just goes to show yeah. you. Right. Now, I know that you were in the movie Wait Until Dark with Audrey Hepburn. Give us some stories.